Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Have you ever complained about how the city spends its resources or wondered how the heck did they decide to do that? Now you have a chance to help make those decisions. The City Council would like your input on its priorities and its five-year business plan. Your feedback will also help shape the next annual budget. Residents are invited to participate in a citizen work session. You'll hear a presentation on budget information and data from citizen satisfaction surveys about resident priorities. Then you will move to breakout groups for discussion. The input gathered will be used to finalize the five-year citywide business plan, which must be adopted by November 1st. Two more citizen work sessions are scheduled. The first is Wednesday, September 23rd from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at Northland Neighborhoods, 4402 Northeast Choteau Traffic Way. And the final session is Tuesday, October 6th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at Hillcrest Community Center, which is at about 104th and Hillcrest Road. To RSVP, just email omb at kcmo.org or call 816-513-1173. The KC Green Team held its biannual KC Green Fair this week where it highlighted green business practices of various city departments and local city businesses. Green our water and air, give the wildlife shelter and food, keep the soil from going bare. They provide storm water control and that is why. Well, the trees are nice. Well, well the trees are nice. Well, green fairs like this out here are very important for us because we always have to reinforce the message that sustainability and resiliency are things that the city uh, wants to take a leadership position in and to really be an example to the rest of the city on what you can do to make less of a carbon footprint, save money in the process, and help our city. Residents who attended learned about a variety of green initiatives and they had a chance to earn some green prizes and enjoy lunch from local food trucks. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Well hello, uh, I'm Kimberly Hess, I'm the director at Lakeside Nature Center and uh, welcome to Lakeside. Uh, tonight we have kind of something special that's going to happen over at uh, Longview Lake. We have a great horned owl who came in about two months ago, um, and we are going to release her tonight, so we're kind of excited. Uh, we have a win on this one. Lakeside does have a rehab possible for all of Missouri's native wildlife if they're injured or sick or orphaned. The public or uh, other public entities can bring them to us, and, and we work with them and try and rehab them. And this girl, she's about ready to leave. Uh, you saw some pictures over there. So we are going to leave, release her tonight. We do it in the evening because obviously she's an owl and she's nocturnal. So tonight she will be taken back to her home territory and hopefully she'll be able to meet up with her mate again because they do mate for life. And uh, it'll be a, a happy ending to this story. She came in on uh, May 21st and what had happened is she was very, very down. Uh, she had a, uh, a soft tissue injury to her wing where she was unable to hunt. She became very, very thin, um, almost emaciated and very dehydrated. So we started with simple fluids. We, we got her uh, hydrated again, and then we started with liquid foods. And as you can see, she has done great. So we're very excited about this one. A little information about our rehab. If uh, the public comes across an animal that is sick or injured, you can always call the center at 513-8960. And we will give assistance on how to capture animals or collect them if they need help and bring them to us. That's one of the things we do. We also do a lot of programming here at the center and we do hikes and all sorts of really great things for kids and adults alike to get them out into the environment and introduce them to these great animals that we work with. Uh, every month we have a hike with a naturalist. It's on a Saturday at 10 o'clock. It's on the website and uh, you come in and there's a naturalist that takes you along our trail and every hike is different because we, we look and see what's in the environment at that time. Different flowers that bloom, different animals that are out and then we, we have a dialogue with what's going on in the environment that, during that day. Again, every Saturday, we have a free program for kids. It's called Mother Nature Reads. Mother Nature comes on out, she reads a story, we do a craft, and we get an animal out for the kids to meet. It's an awesome program for not only the little kids, but I always say bring the big kids on too. It's something for everybody. In October, we have our Magic Woods. This is something we do every year. And again, it is for ages nine months to 90 years. Um, this year's a little bit different. We're only having it one day. It's gonna be October 10th. It's a Saturday. 
and it's all going to be indoors this year except for our hike around out the, outside. The grounds will be open, but we're going to try, due to some weather issues, we're going to try and keep it inside and there's going to be lots of crafts, there's going to be big animals like me dressed up, and we're going to be talking about our, the natural history of the animals that live in this area. And we're going to have live animals on display, our birds, our possums, some snakes, things like that, where kids can get a little bit of hands-on stuff. For more information, you can call the center at 816-513-8960 or visit kcparks.org. Bowen with Municipal Art Commission and I'm very excited for our first annual Art in the Square. We have five amazing artists that have done several pieces down in uh, Washington Square Park and everybody needs to come out and see them. My name is uh, Jake Balcom and I'm a metal sculptor object of, uh, of my sculpture was kind of to uh, create like this little hidden gem, a little secret, something that surprised somebody as they were walking by, seeing something kind of unexpected and kind of making them want to like examine it a little bit further, come into the park. My name is Denise DiPiazzo and I am an artist, a sculptor, a recent MFA graduate from KU in sculpture and I'm also an architect. Uh, when this call for art came out for Art in the Square, we came down and looked at it and really it's more of a triangle down here. It used to be more of a square. It seems to be the central focus to a lot of things or at least this node that maybe not a lot of people know about. We've been working on this for probably three, four months, you know. I came up with the concept pretty quick, but realizing it, it's a 10-foot sphere that's got to be wrapped. It's wrapped three or four times with various things, the details, you know, and all that stuff. So we've been physically producing it for at least eight weeks. My work is half done now. So what's going to happen in the next three months and how people interact with it is really kind of an equally important part of the work. My name is Kati Toivanen and I'm an artist. I was born and raised in Finland, so that's where the name came from. And I'm also a professor at UMKC. When I, when I saw the call, I came down here, spent some time, and I looked around. And these panels, really, I felt like they were kind of designed for something. They're flat, they're almost like picture frames. I went ahead and I posted a, a set of 70 images that are uh, custom made for these panels. They're, of course, all slightly different sizes. Um, and they line this entire walk, which is about 200 yards, so 70 images, uh, one image in each panel. Um, and actually, in, so I photographed the images. They are made of um, artificial representations of real things. So fabric flowers, flowers made of porcelain, plastic, so on. And there's some real flowers mixed in there, live ones. Um, and then um, I photographed those real close up and then in, a, in Photoshop, it, it digitally, I combined them together and altered the colors and so on. So this is actually one continuous, long, really wide panoramic image of, and then those were sliced up into smaller than sections. For one thing, I like reaching new audiences, people who typically wouldn't see art, uh, who go to galleries and museums. So this reaches really a much wider and more variety of people. Want to make a movie? Capture, a community-sourced weekend-long filmmaking event. We announce a theme. You shoot the footage and upload your five best shots. Then editors and musicians stay up all night creating four fantastic films. Want to play? It's happening in Chattanooga and Kansas City. Two gig cities, four short films. Only one can be the best. To find out more, go to CaptureFilmProject.org. Together we'll hold City employees kicked off their annual combined charity campaign last week at Islas Davis Park right across the street from City Hall. Employees enjoyed the lunch break with carnival games, entertainment provided by city employees, and a raffle with all proceeds benefiting charities. We have a very ambitious goal this year of a half million dollars that we're going to raise by city employees. We've met every goal that's been asked of us and we're just kicking it off. We have a lot of fun a lot of participation amongst all the departments, so it's a great event for us to build camaraderie and help out people in, in need. So it's a great day in Kansas City, and you're seeing the enthusiasm 
which city employees respond to the needs of others. Following the kickoff, employees are encouraged to make donations through the charity campaign to the nonprofit of their choosing. Don't miss out on the annual KCI Cruise Specialty Car Event at 12200 Northwest Ambassador Drive. It's on Saturday, September 26 from 3 p.m. until dark for some hot fun and cool cars. Proceeds from this event also benefit the City of Kansas City Combined Charities Campaign. Hundreds of classic cars, muscle cars, hot rods, rat rods, exotics, and more will be on hand. You can participate. Just bring any vehicle you think is worthy of displaying and don't worry about registration or judging. A bounce house will be set up for the kids. Hot dogs and refreshments are just a buck each, so bring your lawn chair and some shade. For more information, visit the Fly KCI website and you can also check out some videos and photos from past KCI cruises. On Saturday, September 25th, the Kansas City Police Department will host its annual Drug Take Back program. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., residents can simply pull up in the parking lot and just hand over the items to the officers on duty. There are several drop-off locations. They include the Walgreens at 5400 Independence Avenue, the Main Core parking lot at 32nd and Main, the Price Chopper at 8430 Warnell Road in the Waldo neighborhood, and in the Northland, you can go to two different police stations, the North Patrol Station at 1001 Northwest Berry Road or the Shoal Creek Station at 6801 Northeast Pleasant Valley Road. As a reminder, prescription and over-the-counter drugs should never be disposed of in the trash or down the toilet. Turning in the drugs also prevents misuse or abuse of these substances. DEA studies show a majority of abused prescription drugs are obtained from family and friends, including from the home medicine cabinet. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.